Good morning. If you want to see how we made these two nice carved wooden oak bowls, dough bowls, stay tuned because that's what we're going to do today. Good morning and welcome to another Mel Memphis Monday, Memphis Monday 293, uh, week 33 of our sixth year. Uh, today we're going to make a uh, dough bowl, carved wooden dough bowl. This is actually one I, I this was the, actually the first one I ever made uh, years ago. I think it was about 10 years ago. Um, and I found it up in my, uh, found it up in my cabinet stored away. And I, and I, it, it struck me that we haven't carved a uh, dough bowl uh, in this series. So that's what we're going to do today. So let's knock off the chit chat and get to work. Here's a closer look at our prototype. Uh, these dough bowls are usually carved out of a single piece of wood with a, uh, you know, with an axe and chisel and awl and all kinds of stuff. Um, one we're doing, the sides are much thinner. The thing is much lighter. Um, and believe it or not, quite quite durable. I've made about 30 of these, and none of them have failed. This one's made out of pine and um, elm, I think. No, no uh, poplar. We're going to make ours out of uh, oak. Here's our little plan. Uh, the whole thing starts out as a series of rings, five rings that are stacked on one. I made this drawing here, each ring a different color. So it's got four rings and one bottom ring that's uh, solid. And they're stacked up on top of one another and glued together. Uh, here I got a side view to show you what the glue up looks like. And then the carving process, when you look at it, you think, well, I, I never carved that, it's too hard. But actually, the way it's constructed here, if you just carve to the corners, on the inside and the outside, your bowl actually lives right in there. You can make your uh, rings that you're going to stack up. You can make it a one-off um, and just carve, do your rings right out on your stock. But these things are so popular that once you make one, other people are going to want one. And so it's better to make a template. Here I've just made some. You can make these rings any shape you want. Um, I've just made these ellipses. So here's my templates. So then what you do is you lay your template down on your stock. And you didn't have to you don't even have to glue these glue this up. Uh, if you go down to your wherever you get your wood, you can find these panels already glued up. And like I've I've glued these up myself, but you can buy these panels already glued up. Uh, lay your template down and then just trace it. I'm adding handles uh, to the top layer and then cut it out with a jigsaw. Let's do that now. And I think you're going to like this feature. Um, the fact that uh, it's all going to be carved, this, uh, this cut you're making here doesn't even have to be spectacular. Uh, because it's all going to be carved away. So what has to be perfect, or nearly perfect, is not this cut. Um, I even have a drill hole through here. What has to be uh, nice and flat and perfect is this surface right here on both sides because this is going to be glued. Turns out my corded jigsaw cuts through this stuff like butter. I 
I got all the rings cut out and I even had some extra some extra stock here so we'll make a small bowl too okay let me show you how I glue these together well I wish this is harder and more technical but all you do is glue these rings together I want a pretty good uh, pretty good joint Okay, here's the last one. I don't know, uh, maybe you can see it, but you can see that I've cut this thing out where the grain is at an angle. I've done that on all these, where it kind of, so the grain is kind of crisscrossed. It's kind of where I want it. I'll put about 50 pounds of weight on it. Now I'll put, I'll put 75 pounds of weight. Well, there's the shell for our little bowl. I just put a toolbox on it because I ran out of clamps. And there's our big bowl over there. Now, the best thing, it's best to leave these things for two or three days to dry, but we don't have two or three days. We're going to give them a few hours. It's the next morning. I, uh... I'm kind of finishing up the inside of this. It's too hard to show you how to carve it on the inside, but I'll show you how to carve it on the outside here. I wanted the glue to dry real good, so I left it overnight. And I went ahead and carved this one, the small one here, so we'd have something to look at. Um, the finish I'm going to be using on this is, and I've already put some on here, is um, spar urethane. And no oil, no stain, just spar urethane. This is all end grain, and this is red oak. And that spar urethane will just soak right in to the uh, fibers and actually make this thing pretty waterproof. All I have is some spray. I'm, I'll buy some uh, regular, but and you sand it down real good. Sand it down real good between coats because you're putting this stuff right on, you know, completely unprotected wood, and it will uh, spall up the grain and stuff. Okay, we're about ready to start uh, carving on that big bowl, and I'm going to give you a preview here of what we're going to be doing. Remember, we stacked our wood pieces like this. Okay, now what we got to do is grind off these little pointy sections here, these corners, and we stop when we get to these, these joints right here. See right there, that joint, it'll, 
it'll you know you, you'll see the scene and that's that tells you it's time to stop um, that keeps you from blowing right through the uh, piece but it's almost foolproof if you stop carving right at that intersection right there here's my setup I uh, got all my tools set up here with the drop cord here um, I can set my project on the bench and importantly I have this I have this fan blowing the dust out the door now with any luck um, if, if I get just the right breeze going it doesn't always work but sometimes I get a breeze going and I don't even use the mask but you're going to produce a lot of you're going to produce a lot of uh, dust so you really need a mask basically use two tools first one I use is a, a cut saw a four and a half inch grinding disc wheel carbide coated um, here's here's the fine tooth right here and here's the more aggressive tooth that I, that I use right here and then Importantly, I use this drill here with the uh, just a sanding pad on it, 40, 40 grit. Now you can use, I'm not very good at it, and uh, you can use one of these chainsaw wheels. Um, I'm, uh, I, don't, I don't use it uh, because first I'm not very good with it yet. And second of all, I'm not comfortable using it without a, without a, you know, without a, a guard. And the guard makes it kind of hard to carve with, in, in my opinion. But don't use it without a guard. This thing can get away from you, and you can see that thing's wicked. And finally, I just use a, uh, the random orbit, just like normal, to smooth it down. So I don't want this thing to move around on me, so what I do is I put in some screws to keep it from moving. Not into the piece, into the table. Okay, before I turn on the fan and everything, I'll tell you what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be showing you. I'm going to take my angle grinder with the cut saw aggressive cut thing and I'll just be grinding down these corners. Simple as that and I, I just know that I don't want to I, I don't want to go any deeper than that inside corner right there. Then after I get the all the corners knocked off with the uh, angle grinder, then this is a 40 grit sandpaper. 
and do the final smoothing. So I got the bowl kind of shaped. You can see on these handles I left lots of meat out here on the ends so that they don't break off. Okay, now what I'm going to do is take my random orbit and starting with uh, 40 or 80 grit, I'll uh, smooth it down, see if there's any more shaping I need. And I'll end up taking it down to about 120, but probably not any smoother than that. Well, here's our bowl so far. Pretty elegant. The reason I don't want to, you know, put a real smooth, you know, I fared it a little bit, but I don't want it to be totally smooth because traditionally these bowls were hewn out of, you know, a a log, you know, just chopped out. So I want to give it a little bit of that. Okay, next, next thing is the finish, and I think that's important. The reason I say it's important, uh, finishing is important, is because, of course, this is a bowl, and I don't think anybody's going to put salad in it or anything, but you could put uh, fruits and vegetables and that kind of stuff. But anyway, this is red oak, and red oak has a characteristic that is very impermeable it's it's permeable through the end grain and this is almost all end grain and so when i put this when i put this finish on it it's going to soak into the into this i'm not putting any oil uh no stain no nothing just going to put this uh spar urethane on it and it's going to soak right into the wood and fill up all those uh, all those gaps and make this thing waterproof and hopefully I'll be able to show you because sometimes you can get into some of this red oak that's so permeable that you can put it on one side of the piece and it'll soak right through the other. We'll see if that happens here. Actually, that's the test. If you want to test uh, red oak, see if you got red oak or white oak. What you do is you take it and, and cut a couple of pieces, samples of it, and you, you put the end grain down in the uh, uh, down in the uh, oil or the paint thinner and the white oak you know it'll penetrate a little bit but the red oak it'll penetrate all the way through well that'll do it for uh, Memphis Monday 293 making some carved wooden bowls, oak. I think we covered just about everything 
you need to uh, you need to get to make these bowls. Overall, I'm pretty satisfied. Well, that does it for uh, Memphis Monday 293. Our carved wooden dough bowls. I think we went over just about everything that you need to know to make them. I didn't spend a lot of time showing the carving. Because, uh, boy, it got, gets kind of boring, you know. Carve, and then you carve some more, and then you carve some more. But I think if you have an angle grinder, if you follow those tips about making the rings, stacking the rings on top of one another, gluing them together good, and then with an angle grinder, you just just knock the tops off those the little square parts, smooth it out with a disc sander, and makes real nice little carved bowl, carved bowls. Um, you know, I've made about a hundred of them. First time I think we've done one on Memphis Monday, but. Um, Pretty popular, you know, little gift items and this and that. They're small enough and they look good enough. Okay, so like, favorite, share, all the stuff to you on the internet. The most important, make sure you're back here next week for another exciting Memphis Monday. Thanks for playing along.